Hi, I'm Ginger, and welcome to a special episode of the Copycat Quilter. Today I have a very special guest who's going to answer some burning questions about quilt math. So stay tuned and let me introduce Regan Bashara. Hi, I'm okay. Regan Bashara, and I have a degree in math and physics from LSU. <laughs> And I love talking about geometry and trigonometry, which is just the study of basically shapes and angles and lines. So I like coming on and giving some information about shapes that you're going to use in your quilts. And if you're building a quilt and you need to start from basic shapes, it's a good idea to understand the basic geometry of it all and how it's all going to fit together. Yeah, and especially things like this where it shows that two of the rectangles put together make a square and then mm -hmm. you can flip that square like those those kind of relationships I think are important for people to be able to see. Yeah, and so, like there's so many things that you can learn about different ways to put these shapes together to create squares exactly. um, that I think is really cool that you're teaching people how to do like how can I look at this and break it down into its most basic components. What are the rules about those components do I have to know if these sides are equal length. Well, if you're going to be sewing them together, you probably do want them to be equal <laughs> length. <laughs> that is very important. <laughs> and for full disclosure purposes, I should disclose that we do have a relationship, <laughs> that, that you are more than just my mathematician friend that I call. I am uh, not a paid actor, though. <laughs> <laughs> you are not a paid actor. You are a <laughs> bachelor of science, math and physics, and just happen to be my wonderful daughter. <laughs> Happy to come on and talk about geometry with all your followers. <laughs> okay. First thing is to talk about isosceles triangles. And an isosceles triangle is defined as a shape that has three sides and three interior angles. And two of the sides of this shape are going to be equal in length. Here we have inside this middle square. I'm going to mark these sides to show that these sides of the triangle are equal length, making that an isosceles triangle. And if this were a quilt block, it would be an isosceles triangle inscribed, I think is the word, inside of a square. So if it's a square, we know that all four of the sides are equal length. This isosceles triangle where two of the corners match up to two of the corners of the square, and then the third angle of the triangle bisects this top line of the square up here. This is not an equilateral triangle, just two of the sides are equal length. And then this length down here is, I believe it's shorter than these yep. because these would shorter. be a hypotenuse. So. And then an equilateral triangle, which I can draw, means that all three sides are the same length. So for instance, this triangle that is half of this square right here, the one of these triangles inside this square is a right triangle because one of the angles in the triangle is a 90 degree angle. That's how we mark that something is a right angle. And so the diagonal line on this triangle is the hypotenuse because it's across directly across from the right angle and the hypotenuse of a right triangle is going to be longer than either one of the other two sides okay this is an isosceles triangle because it's within a square and since we know that squares have all four sides of equal length we know that this side is equal to that side so the Triangles within this square that bisects that square are isosceles triangles. The only thing that you need to have for an isosceles triangle is that it's number one, a triangle. It's a shape with three sides and three interior angles, and that two of the sides are equal length. And therefore, an equilateral triangle does meet the criteria to be an isosceles triangle. It is a special kind of isosceles triangle. Not all isosceles triangles are equilateral, and that's okay. We can all live in a world where not all isosceles triangles are equilateral. So I've talked about isosceles triangles, equilateral triangles, and right angles and right triangles. So uh, just like somebody pointed out in the comments, 
all of the interior angles of a triangle are going to add up to 180 degrees. So for a right triangle, one of those angles is going to be 90 degrees by definition of a right triangle. And that means that the sum of the other two angles in that triangle are also going to add up to 90 degrees because all of the angles need to add to 180. But you can have a right triangle that has two 45 degree angles. You can have a right triangle like this triangle right here. With yeah, I actually noticed, I noticed that when you were drawing it, that those are right yeah. triangles. Yeah, yeah. So these are right triangles because one of the angles in here is a right angle. And, but the difference between this triangle over here is that these two angles are 45 degrees, but we have a right triangle where we know that this angle and this top, this angle down here are not 45 degrees. And I mean, we could sit here and do the proof for that, but since we're drawing it on a whiteboard, we can easily see that those angles are different sizes. So this would be not one side. side is the not is half of the length of this side. Yeah. And we already, oops, and we already established that this diagonal line is longer than either of those two sides. So right. this is neither isosceles nor equilateral, but it is a right triangle. So triangles can like be all of these different classifications. Some of them like equilateral triangles are also isosceles triangles. So we talked about right triangles, right angles, um, did we want to go over anything in here or you just wanted to have that block? Well, that block is a quarter square triangle. It's called in quilting because there's four triangles in there that make a square, but they still are right angles there in the center. Correct. Are those two sides would be the same length, right? Because it's pointing from the center out to a corner. Yes. <laughs> They're isosceles. Yeah. So they're isosceles because these lines bisect each other. So we know that each of these segments is equal length because they're bisecting because they're in the middle of that square. Right. So we know that this leg and this leg are the same length, but they're shorter than this longer side, which is the side of the square. So because we know two of the sides are equal length and the third, the third side is not equal, then that's an isosceles triangle by definition because two sides are equal length. So the quarter square triangle block is made up of four isosceles triangles inscribed in a square. So all equilaterals are isosceles. Yes. Right triangles may or may not be isosceles. Correct. And, and triangle and a square is not an equilateral, but it is an isosceles. Yeah, so this center one here. Makes sense when I see it in a drawing. <laughs> yeah. And you don't always want to go off of drawings, right? Like they taught us this in school because I took a lot of math classes, a lot of geometry classes. You never want to draw something and then try to prove it from your own drawing, even if it's on like a computer where we know the exact length. We want to prove it by assuming what are the rules about isosceles triangles, equilateral triangles, right triangles. What do we know are the rules about those types of triangles? And then you work from those rules to prove something about the shape that you're looking at. So we covered all three of those and we covered all the topics. Um, so I really like geometry because I'm all about like rules and classifications. And so like in geometry, that's all you're doing is looking at what is the shape classified as and what are the rules? Like, what do we know to be true about that shape because it has that classification? And as a computer programmer, I'm very specific about words too, because those kinds of words and those terminologies can really make a big difference when you're working on something very precise. Yeah, we love rules and we love being precise and classifying <laughs> things. <laughs> math, computer, which computers like computer science is based on a lot of math and like assuming one thing so that we can get to another thing. Okay, well, I appreciate you taking time and uh, for helping explain all that. I learn a lot from it, and I hope some of the other quilters do too. I love doing geometry proofs, so it's my pleasure to come on and draw shapes. <laughs> <laughs>
and talk about shapes. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on.